4K, 165 hertz, one millisecond, 32 inches, ultra wide curved. These are all the things that you'll hear when you're looking into monitors. And if you're not sure what you're looking for, things can get overwhelming fast. When buying a monitor, there's a lot to consider. Today, we're gonna break down different monitor features and use cases so you can find the right monitor for you. Sometimes a monitor meant for productivity wouldn't be suitable for gaming. And sometimes a monitor for gaming won't be suitable for color accurate work like color grading video footage. There's no one monitor to rule them all. Or is there? Before we dive into specs, the first thing to consider is the use case for your monitor. If you want a monitor for gaming, then refresh rate and latency are important factors to consider. If you want productivity, large screen size, wide aspect ratios, multiple monitors, and higher resolution are ideal for more real estate on your screen to have multiple windows open simultaneously. If you want something for color sensitive work, you want a color accurate panel and then a higher resolution. Let's start from square one, literally. The image on your monitor is comprised of pixels, which are small square picture elements that illuminate or light up, and they represent a single point of color. Pixels are made up of subpixels, and they emit red, green, and blue colors, or RGB, and they illuminate this at different intensities that mix together to create the color of the pixel. Each pixel is like a puzzle piece of a larger overall image, and with all the puzzle pieces together, you get your full image on the screen. PPI, or pixels per inch, which can also sometimes be referred to as DPI, or dots per inch, are a measurement for a monitor's screen pixel density. A higher pixel density means there's more pixels packed into every square inch of your screen. Pixel density comes into play when you start looking at the next few specs. Some of the first factors that are highlighted when looking for a new monitor are resolution, aspect ratio, and monitor size. All three of these things are tied together as well as pixel density. So we'll dive into all of them. Resolution is the number of pixels on the screen. When you hear 1080 resolution, this means the screen is 1920 pixels long by 1080 pixels high. Generally, the height of the image is what's referred to when talking about resolution, but this gets muddy as you get into bigger resolutions. We'll cover this later. The more pixels, the higher the resolution. The higher the resolution, the more detailed an image can be. This is where pixels per square inch comes back into the picture, literally. You can have two monitors that have a 1080 resolution, but one will be a 21 inch and the other will be a 27 inch. While the number of pixels is the same on both monitors, the pixel density will not be the same and the image can look less sharp on the 27 inch monitor. The PPI on the 21 inch monitor will be about 105 PPI, while the 27 inch monitor will have an 82 PPI. Basically, if the resolution stays the same, the larger the screen increases, the more the pixel density decreases. This is where different resolutions are key. As you go up in monitor screen size, you want the resolution to increase as well. Remember, screen size is measured diagonally, so a 27 inch monitor is 27 inches across, corner to corner. If we take the 27 inch 1080 monitor and put it next to another 27 inch monitor, but this monitor has a 1440 resolution, you'll see an increase in image sharpness on the 1440 monitor. The 1440 monitor is 2560 pixels long by 1440 pixels high in the same 27 inch area that the 1080 monitor is in. That means the 1440 monitor has 109 PPI at 27 inches compared to the 82 PPI of the 1080 monitor at 27 inches. The 1440 27-inch monitor has a similar pixel density to the 1080 monitor at 21 inches. So if you want to keep pixel density consistent across screen sizes, then you have to step up in resolution. All of this can be subjective, since the way the monitors are perceived can be affected by your distance from the monitor. Up close, a large 32-inch 1080 monitor may look less sharp than a 1440 monitor of the same size. As you get further from the screen, that difference may be less apparent. A rule of thumb for viewing distance from a monitor is to be arm's length away for optimal distance. This is something that I'd recommend just coming into the store to see for yourself. Try looking at different size monitors and different resolutions in person to see the difference in pixel density for yourself and see what feels more comfortable for you to use. Aspect ratio is one last thing that ties into resolution and screen size. Both 1920 by 1080 and 2560 by 1440 are 16 by 9 aspect ratios. 
Aspect ratios are the ratio of the length by the height of the screen. 16 by 9 is one of the most common aspect ratios these days for monitors as well as televisions, since they have a wide aspect ratio that comfortably fits most video and movie aspect ratios. When you watch a movie and you see the bars at the top and bottom of your screen, that's because the movie was shot in a different aspect ratio. Now, we could deep dive on aspect ratios, but there's a lot to say there. The takeaway here is that when looking at monitors, aspect ratios are a quick way to identify the shape of the monitor screen. A 4x3 aspect ratio will be more square-like. A 16x9 aspect ratio is a wide screen. A 21x9 is an ultra-wide, and a 32x9 is a super-wide. There's plenty of flavors in between, like 16x10, which has resolutions like 1920x1200 and 2560x1600 which are slightly taller in height when compared to 16x9 monitors, and they're more commonly found on many laptops. Now, you can, in theory, find monitors that have a 1080 resolution in a 4x3 aspect ratio. Something like a 1440x1080 resolution does count as 1080, so pay attention to aspect ratio when shopping for a monitor. Now, beyond 1440 resolution, there's higher resolutions, such as 4K. UHD is 3840 pixels long by 2160 pixels high, and this is generally considered 4K, but this is actually 4K UHD. Now, this picture is four times the pixels of a full HD or 1080 resolution. DCI 4K, or true 4K, is 4096 pixels long by 2160 pixels high, so it's a little wider than UHD. UHD has a 16x9 aspect ratio, while DCI 4K has an aspect ratio of 19x10. From there, you can get into higher resolutions like 6K, 8K, and even 12K. But for now, we're going to focus on 4K. Since 4K is four times as many pixels as 1080, it requires a lot more computational power from your GPU. This is a big factor when looking into 4K monitors. While many integrated GPUs can handle 4K output for general productivity like office work or browsing the web, you do need a strong GPU to handle gaming in 4K. So if you're looking to buy a 4K monitor, you need to take a hard look at your system to make sure that it can handle that output. Outside of gaming, 4K monitors are great for productivity and creativity, giving plenty of resolution to view 4K video at the natural resolution from your 4K camera. One thing to consider if you want to get a 4K monitor is scaling. With scaling at 100%, everything on your PC is going to be very small and hard to read. You have to keep in mind that you added four times as many pixels to your image, so images and text at their natural pixel resolution will render very small on your screen. Image scaling is important for high-resolution monitors, and it can be done easily in your computer's operating system. But do keep in mind, some apps still don't do well with image scaling, so it can cause some issues here and there. Refresh rate is a big feature for modern monitors that allows for a smoother overall experience. The refresh rate is the number of times the image is refreshed per second, which is expressed in hertz. So if your monitor has a 60 hertz refresh rate, then the image is refreshed 60 times in one second. Now, this is not to be confused with frame rate, which is something that we're going to get into in a minute. Response time is how quickly an individual pixel can change from one color to the next. So high refresh rate and a fast response time go hand in hand. Low response times lead to ghosting, where you have the appearance of a blurry shadow trailing behind an image as it moves on your screen. High refresh rates and fast response times are ideal for gaming. Now, let's talk about frame rate again. That's handled on the GPU side of things, where your game is processed by your PC and the GPU renders the frames that are sent to your monitor. This is measured in frames per second, which is pretty straightforward. How many frames are rendered in each second? A high frame rate means a smoother viewing experience in your game. The high refresh rate and fast response times are on the monitor side of things, where the monitor processes the image and sends the instructions for each pixel to react to the instructions and then show the image. If you're gaming on a monitor that has a 60 hertz refresh rate, it can only accurately show 60 frames per second before you start getting screen tearing. If you have a monitor with 144 hertz refresh rate, then you can accurately show 144 frames per second. You can get a monitor with a high refresh rate 
But if your GPU is not powerful enough to output enough frames, then you're not taking full advantage of that high refresh rate. That also works the other way. If you have a very powerful GPU that is outputting high frame rates in your games, but you're only using a monitor that goes to 60 Hertz, then you're not taking full advantage of your strong GPU. This is a vast oversimplification, obviously, but this is the easiest way to understand the relationship between refresh rate and frame rate. When I mentioned screen tearing, that's when the refresh rate of the monitor and the frame rate from the GPU are not synced up and you get a horizontal split in the image. There's many ways to counteract that with V-Sync, FreeSync, G-Sync, the list goes on. V-Sync will sync the vertical refresh rate of your monitor with the GPU's frame rates, but it makes the GPU wait until the monitor can display a full frame, which could lead to higher input lag that can affect gaming. This can be less of an issue with higher refresh rate monitors though. Again, a big oversimplification, but there's a lot to talk about on this topic and it's too much for this video. The panel is the part that displays the image on your monitor. There's many different panel types, but it boils down to LCD or OLED panels. A majority of monitor panels will be LCD or liquid crystal displays. These are flat panel displays that have a white backlight covered with polarizing filters a liquid crystal layer, electrodes, and a color filter that all works together to create the image that you see. The electrodes provide a current to the liquid crystal layer, changing the polarity and allowing light through different color filters to make up the image that you see. We're not gonna deep dive too much into panels, but the result is there are different common LCD panel types, and they're each based around how the liquid crystal layer works. TN panels are twisted pneumatic, which refers to the way the crystals twist polarization of the light. These panels are known for fast refresh rates and fast response times, but they're also known for having smaller color spaces and limited viewing angles. TN panels can be among the fastest for competitive gaming, with some panels going up to 540 hertz. VA panels, or vertical alignment, use a different method of liquid crystal alignment that allows for better contrast ratios, a larger color space, and better viewing angles than TN panels. These are commonly found in curved monitors like this one, and they can easily have refresh rates up to 240 Hertz. IPS panels, or in-plane switching, which refers again to how the liquid crystal functions, are generally well-suited for color accuracy and viewing angles, though they will not have as high contrast ratios as VA panels. These are generally recommended for color accurate work like video editing or photo editing and color grading. OLED panels are very different than LCD panels since they do not have a backlight, meaning they reproduce true blacks and they have better contrast ratios since they can technically turn pixels on and off instead of just dimming the pixel like an LCD panel. They have great viewing angles and response times, though they may not be as bright as some LCD panels. While OLED can be great all around, they can be much higher in price than LCD panels. When shopping for a new monitor, there's a lot to consider when it comes to panel type. If you want budget, generally that will be TN. If you want color accuracy, then IPS. If you want better contrast ratios, then VA. And if you want best viewing angles, then OLED. We've broadly covered a lot of topics on monitors. So now you probably have a good idea of what monitor you wanna get. So what's the next step? Well, get a second monitor, obviously. Multi-monitor setups are standard in PCs these days, with the added real estate of a second monitor being almost a necessity for nearly everyone. If you're a gamer, it means having one screen with your game open and another with Discord and browser windows open. For work, it's handy to have one with emails and Slack messages and another dedicated to your browser or office apps. Productivity is a great use case for vertically oriented monitors, or basically taking your widescreen monitor and turning it to the side. This gives longer real estate for Word docs or browsers, and it gives a much needed vertical real estate versus the horizontal real estate of two horizontally mounted monitors. Even in photo and video editing, multiple monitors are basically a requirement. I cannot edit a video without at least two to three monitors, one for the timeline, one for my clips and effects, and one as a preview monitor to see a full screen preview of what I'm editing. Running a multiple monitor setup is a breeze. Just plug them into your PC, 
make sure you plug them into your GPU, and set up their orientations and layouts. Then, put them in whatever configuration you want on your desk, and you're good to go. While it's easy getting a multi-monitor setup going, having it set up ergonomically is key. Your monitors will typically come with a monitor stand that sits on your desk. Some basic stands will allow tilting of the monitor up to about 15 degrees or so, while other stands will allow you to raise the monitor higher or lower, and it'll have a swivel so you can turn your monitor into the vertical position. One good addition to your desk to free up some physical real estate on your desk would be a monitor arm. These mount to your desk and the monitor hangs over your desk, freeing up all the physical space under the monitor that would typically be taken up by the monitor stand. I prefer monitor arms because they allow you to make easy adjustments to the position of your monitor on the fly. If you're like me and your sitting position is always changing, then you want to make sure that your monitor position can change as well. So I'm always making small adjustments to my arm mounted monitors. Monitor arms can support single, dual, and even triple monitor setups. They allow you to raise or lower your monitor and tilt and rotate so you can make easy changes to your monitors for different working scenarios. If I'm editing a video that's going on social media, I'll turn my monitor vertically to get the vertical preview and the monitor arm makes it that much easier. Ergonomics are a big factor for your monitor as well. The way you position the monitor is important for long working or gaming sessions, so you don't have any neck pains or eye strain. Generally, you want your monitor to be about arm's length away from your face and have the monitor at eye level or slightly below eye level, with your eyes looking directly downward at the center of your screen. You want your monitor to be tilted slightly downward to avoid glare from any overhead lights to relieve eye strain. If you use multiple monitors, I typically like to have my main monitor centered with my additional monitor on the side. Having a monitor on each side can actually increase neck pain from turning left and right all the time. Trust me, it's a major pain. If you like using a standing desk, then a monitor arm is a great addition to make changes to your monitor as you sit and stand. As your desk raises, you may need to change the position of your monitor for your standing position and vice versa for the sitting position. Curved monitors are widely popular, both due to gaming and productivity, due to the way that the monitor can fill your whole field of view. They're also a nice option to have over multiple monitors, since they can basically function similarly to a multi-monitor setup, but all in one. They provide an immersive experience for gaming, and they're great for any simulator games like racing sims or flight sims. The curvature of the monitor is measured in R, or radius, and there's generally a number attached before the R, such as 1800R, 3000R, or 4000R. This is the radius in millimeters, or the distance from the circle's perimeter to the center. The lower the curve number, the deeper the curve shape. This also works for the optimal viewing distance from the monitor. If you have a monitor with an 1800R, then the ideal sitting position would be 1.8 meters away. If the monitor is 3000R, then three meters away. Now, something like the Samsung Arc, which has a 1000R curvature and a 55 inch screen size, you're gonna to wanna to sit about one meter away because this deep curve and this screen size are gonna fill up your field of vision intensely. Other ultra-wide monitors have a curve that's less deep to allow for easy viewing of the corners, and they can be great for productivity where you have multiple windows open with email, Slack, spreadsheets, and more. Now that we've covered all of the basics, keep in mind that not one monitor is gonna work for everyone. If you're a gamer, look for higher refresh rates and faster pixel response times. If you want a monitor for productivity, look for something with ergonomics, like a curve and higher resolution for more real estate on the screen. And if you want to get into creative or color accurate work, keep the panel type in mind for color accuracy and contrast ratios. Remember, you can browse all of these monitors at your local micro center and try them out for yourself to find the one that best suits your needs. And if you don't have a micro center near you, make sure you comment below hashtag I want a micro center near me.